Hi everyone, this is Ryan Scott from ChurchSetup.com and in this video I'm going to walk you through how to set up the A10 Mini Pro live streaming kit. And the same goes for the 1, 2, 3, and 4 camera kits and if you get uh, an upgrade to the A10 Mini Pro ISO or the A10 Mini Extreme, the setup is almost exactly the same. The very first thing you're going to want to do is find the instructions. There's two sets of them. There's going to be one that shows you how to program the PTZ cameras and then there's one that shows you the diagram of how everything sets up. And the first thing you want to notice on that diagram is that everything is plugging in um, that has an ethernet cable attached. It's all coming into the single power over ethernet or POE hub that we include in the kit. You're going to want to connect that first. So you need to plug that into power and then run from one port that has to be connected to your network for the setup to work. If you don't connect that to the network, then the cameras and the joystick are not gonna get a dynamic IP address. You can, if you know what you're doing, you can set all that stuff up manually, but it's really difficult. It's much easier if they're getting their IP address and all that information from your router. So connect that POE hub, it's an eight port hub from Netgear. You're gonna wanna connect that, and the first thing you need to do is connect it to your router through an ethernet cable. Once that is connected to your main internet source, whatever that is, then you can start connecting everything else. So step number two is gonna to be to connect your cameras and your joystick controller if you got one of those. The joystick controller doesn't come with one camera kits. You can add that on by just finding the joystick controller in the store and adding it to the cart. But if you have a joystick controller, you're gonna to wanna to connect that through ethernet to that eight port hub. And then for your cameras, you're gonna to want to run two cables to your camera. The first one is the fiber optic HDMI cable. The second one is the Cat6 Ethernet cable. They should both be 100 feet by default. If you want custom links, if you need longer, um, this works up to 300 feet, so just let us know. We can work out a custom quote for you. But um, each camera is going to need both of those cables plugged in, the Cat6 Ethernet cable and the fiber optic HDMI. Pay attention to the fiber optic HDMI because it's one directional, meaning you have a source end and you have a display end. The display end goes into the A10 Mini Pro. The source end goes into the camera. So on the, on the end of the dongle there, you'll see that uh, where you're plugging in, it says source or display. Just make sure you're plugging source into the camera. So you connect both the fiber optic cable into the camera, the HDMI cable, and you'll plug in the Cat6 Ethernet cable. And then you'll come back to the A10 Mini Pro and your hub. The ethernet cable goes into the hub. The fiber optic HDMI goes into whatever channel you want to connect that camera to in the A10 Mini Pro. Okay, now I have all that connected. The next step is going to be connecting the A10 Mini Pro to a monitor so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, the next step is actually going to include those instructions on how to program the camera, but I'm gonna walk you through it in this video anyway. So I'm gonna plug in the A10 Mini Pro to my monitor using the HDMI cable. And then we'll be able to see the, the program multi-view preview window that the A10 Mini Pro gives us. And we'll go on to uh, step number three or four, <laughs> whatever step we're on, which is uh, programming the cameras with the joystick controller. So everything is on and working right, and you need to get everything on so that you can see the camera um, through the A10 Mini Pro's uh, preview window because it's gonna show you what your IP address is. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna go to the camera with this remote control and uh, press pound star four. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna reset the camera and it's gonna tell the camera to get an IP address from your router so that everything is gonna be on the right network and you won't have IP address conflicts. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And after you press pound star four, the camera is actually gonna reboot. So you wanna give it time to go through its cycle. The camera's gonna move around a little bit and when the image comes back, we'll continue. All right, now the image is back, and if you're quick, you'll see the IP address right there on the monitor in the preview window right here. But if you miss it, there's a way to get it, and it's step number two of this process, and that's going, and it's the same keys, just in a different order. So before we did pound star four, now we're gonna do star pound four, and it's gonna display our IP address on the screen. We'll, we're gonna want to write that number down so that we remember it. So I'm gonna do that now. And it's telling me that my IP address is 10.1.10.100. It's going to be different for you, but that's the IP address that I need to remember. 10.1.10.100. The reason that's important is because now I've got to program my joystick controller to communicate to that camera. 
And the only way I do that is to tell the joystick controller to send those commands to that IP address. Okay, this is how you program your joystick controller to communicate with your camera. They're both connected through the ethernet cable to our eight port hub. Uh, this is, and the camera is as well. This is powered through the hub, and so is the camera. So um, this is the only cord that has to go to it. But we wanna tell this uh, joystick controller to communicate with the camera. So to do that, we need to add a device. Now, if you have your IP address from the earlier setup steps, we're gonna click setup here, and it's gonna say camera device list. We're gonna move the joystick to the right once to add device, and then hit enter. And it's gonna ask us for a device ID. Now, we can put anything as an ID, but if you notice the cam one through six here, these are um, presets that correspond to the numbers one through six. So if I do a setup for um, number one, I'll hit enter. It's gonna ask me for the IP address of my camera, which I, which I wrote down earlier, and it was 10.1.10.1. And then you hit enter, and uh, that IP address is going to be different for you depending on your router. So it's not going to be the same, but you're gonna, it's going to ask, do you want to go UDP or TCP? I'm doing UDP, and the UDP port will be the same for you. It's 1259. We hit enter, and it says uh, device added successfully. So if I hit cam1 here, now it shows you that it's um, sending to the camera at 10.1.10.100. Now when I move the joystick controller, you're gonna be able to see that the camera is moving corresponding to my movements. So now we have added that camera successfully. And now, whenever I want to control this particular camera, on my keyboard controller, I hit cam one, and then whatever movements I do is going to send to the camera. If you have multiple cameras, you can assign them the device um, number two, three, four, five, and six and then you just hit one of these to switch to that camera and then you can control it. Now the next step is gonna be connecting your ATEM Mini to connect it so that it can start live streaming. And to do that, you're gonna to want to connect it in one or two ways. You're gonna connect it either through the USB cord to a computer if you're using OBS or on a Mac if you're using Ecamm, you can plug it in through the USB to one of those. But the ATEM Mini Pro, the reason that we use that and not just the regular ATEM Mini is that the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Pro ISO and the ATEM Mini Pro Extreme and Extreme ISO, all of those um, actually have a built-in encoder so they can stream without actually connecting to any computer. You will need a computer to set up the software and plug in your streaming information, which we'll show you in a minute. But uh, the first step is to connect the ATEM Mini Pro to that eight port um, ethernet um, hub if you do want to run it in isolation, if you don't want it to go into a computer. So that's how most people do it. We're gonna show you how to connect that. We'll show you later how to connect it to OBS or Ecamm. The next step is to connect the ATEM Mini to your sound system so that you get really good audio. You're not gonna want to include the uh, audio that your camera captures into your stream because the, the microphones on cameras are really bad. They're gonna be in the room somewhere, have really bad acoustic, it just sounds really bad. So you wanna bring in your sound to your stream from your mixer. So depending on what mixer you have, kind of impacts how you do this. Um, but you should have like a sub mix or a monitor mix or something so that you can control what the stream hears individually from what the house hears or the, mon the stage hears. And so some sub mix, if you have a, a Behringer like X32, which a lot of churches have, you can just mix down a sub mix into a subgroup and then come out of that and go to your ATEM, in ATEM Mini. And even small mixers will allow you to do a subgroup or auxiliary send or something like that. You want to use that to send it to your live stream. So you'll come out of your mixer with a regular XLR cable. Depending on your mixer, if it's a really small one, you might have to have an adapter. Um, but you'll come out of that mixer however, however you can with the uh, XLR cable that we included, or you can use one of your own. And you'll come into this little adapter that we include in the kit. And this takes the XLR end, or what most people would call a microphone cable, and turns it into uh, the eight millimeter uh, jack that can plug into the back of the AT Mini Pro. And you'll just connect it that way, plug it into mic one or mic two, whichever one you want. And then I'll show you how to do everything else inside of the software. And we're pretty much up and ready to go. 
Okay, now we've switched over to handheld, so uh, the stability of the camera is going to be a little bit different. But I'm going to show you now um, how to set up your A10 Mini. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go download the software. You'll go to blackmagicdesign.com support, and you'll find it about three or four the way down um, on the left-hand side. So you're looking for A10 Switcher software. If you're on a Mac, download it for Mac. If you're on a Windows computer, download it for Windows. And uh, when you get it, you'll install the software. And then after installing the software, uh, you can open it. Now, this computer right here is not connected um, physically to the ATEM Mini. I don't have the USB uh, cord plugged in because this, this computer is connected uh, to the same network as the ATEM Mini. So I can actually control the ATEM Mini. If you see here, I can control switching the cameras um, from the... Uh, from the computer that's just connected to the network. So if you're wirelessly connected with your computer, you can actually control the A10 Mini without being physically here. So um, if you're across the room, you can actually control your stream through the software. But you'll need this software to plug in the information needed to make the A10 Mini stream to uh, YouTube or Facebook or whichever you choose. So once you have it um, installed, and once you're either connected through the USB or um, through the network, it's going to pull up a screen that looks exactly like this. You want to notice over here where it says palettes, media player, and output. You're looking for output. This is the output of the Ethernet signal on the back of the A10 Mini. So uh, you can choose either Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, um, Twitter, Periscope, Vimeo. Um, I'm choosing Restream right now because Restream is the, um, the program we use to multi-stream to multi-platforms. So if you look at our Restream here, we're streaming both to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. The reason we use Restream is because if you're going to stream to multiple platforms at the same time, you're going to need either extra hardware because this one only streams to one at a time, one at a time. and it requires much faster internet. Uh, to stream to multiple can multiple platforms at a time. It's much better to stream to a single platform like Restream and let Restream send it out to all the different channels. And you can see that uh, you can add just about anywhere you want to be. Twitch, Twitter, uh, there's so many different platforms and you can do custom platforms as well. Um, so that's what we use, Restream.io. And um, we've got a link to that on our website somewhere um, if you want to go sign up for that. But uh, Restream, just like YouTube, just like Facebook, they'll give you your streaming information, which is a streaming server. And uh, you normally don't have to remember that because if you choose like YouTube here, it's got the server information already entered for you. All you need is your stream key. Don't share that with anyone because if anybody gets that, they can stream to your platform without your knowledge. So you just want to copy that and paste it into the area here. And as soon as that is plugged in, all you have to do is click on air or on the A10 Mini, you can choose this little button right here that says stream. You can click on air and it will go live to your platform of choice if you have that information um, locked in. So I'm going to switch back over to the restream. And now the stream is live and I can move the joystick controller and you can see that the stream is now live. So let's go back and talk about the audio control. You'll control your audio in here as well and you need to set this. So you'll click over here to the audio tab and what you're going to see is these are all of the inputs that uh, you have on um, your cameras and what you have coming in through mic number one and mic number two. So I'm going to turn that on. You can see, oh my word, it's way too loud. Um, I, can, I can control it here. If I need to pan left or right, I can do that as well here. Um, I don't want to. I want it to be at zero. So I'm just going to put in zero there. Um, but this is where I will control the audio. If I want to turn camera one on and capture from that, I can do that. Uh, but since I'm coming in mic one from my sound system, um, this is where I'm getting, and you're actually hearing that through my monitor. My monitor has speakers, and that's how you control the audio for 
your live stream. Now that everything is set up and ready to go, you can stream through OBS or Ecamm using the USB cord, or all you have to do is walk up to the AT Mini Pro, hit go live, and uh, you'll be streaming to YouTube or Facebook or whatever your platform of choice is. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can send those questions in the comments, or you can send those questions to support at churchsetup.com if you're a customer, and we'll help you get it all sorted out. Hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.